What is that one decision you made that has impacted your life the most? What was your reasoning behind it? In the next four minutes, we'll see that we don't often know the why behind our behavior, but we pretend to know it. In the 1970s, Roger Sperry and Michael Gazzanica conducted multiple experiments on cognitive neuroscience. They chose patients who underwent corpus callosotomy. It's a surgery where the neurosurgeon cuts off the nerve fibers between the left hemisphere and the right. It is done to treat epilepsy seizures. These patients are also called split brain patients. Now here is some context. Our brain is divided into two hemispheres, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. The left hemisphere controls the right side of our body, which is the right eye, right ear, right hand and right leg. And the right hemisphere controls the left side of our body. In a normal brain, information flows between the two hemispheres. After a brain is split, the two hemispheres can no longer exchange information. It is almost like two different people living in one body. The split brain patients are able to live a seemingly normal life, but there is a disturbing fact that they hide behind the surface. And that is exactly what Sperry and Gazanika set out to expose. The premise of their experiments were to feed information to one hemisphere and to ask the other hemisphere to describe it. Here is experiment 1. A split brain patient, let's call him Brian, was shown two photographs. His right eye was shown the photograph of a hen, which means the left hemisphere of his brain was able to process that information. His left eye was shown the photograph of a snowy field, which means the right hemisphere of his brain processed that information. In normal cases, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere would communicate with each other and the person would come to know about both the pictures. But in Brian's case, his right hemisphere and his left hemisphere could not coordinate. After showing the pictures, the researchers asked Brian to reach out with his left hand to point to a word that best matched the picture he had just seen. Brian pointed to a shovel. But then the researchers asked him to explain why he chose the shovel. Let's think on it. The researchers had asked him to point with his left hand, which means his right hemisphere was in control. The right hemisphere through its left eye had seen a snowy field and thus the left hand naturally chose the shovel. But now Brian was asked to explain his choice. And speech is a function of the left hemisphere. Now Brian's left hemisphere through the right eye had only seen the hen. It was not aware of the snowy field that its right hemisphere had seen. Brian's left hemisphere cooked up an explanation. Shovel to clean the chicken coop. Sperry and Gazanica experimented on another patient. Let's call him Byron. They whispered in Byron's left ear and asked him to get up and walk towards the door. The information was captured by the right hemisphere. While Byron was walking towards the door, Sperry and Gazanica asked him, Where are you going? Now to provide an explanation, which means to speak, Byron's left hemisphere was activated. But his left hemisphere had no clue that his right hemisphere had been instructed to leave. Instead of admitting ignorance, Brian's left hemisphere cooked up an explanation. I wanted to go get a coke. Here's a third experiment and it is the saddest. In certain patients, the right hemisphere goes into a stroke, paralyzing the left side of their body. But the patient denies that anything is wrong with the left arm and will manufacture excuses as to why the left hand would not move. Neuroscientist V.S. Ramachandran listed some of the excuses that his patients have given. One said he had arthritis and movement was painful. Another said he just didn't feel like moving his left arm. One patient was asked to raise both his arms. He raised his right and said that he was balancing himself with his left hand by keeping it steady. No amount of cross-examination could make these patients admit that their left hand was actually paralyzed. Their brains rationalized everything and shielded them from the painful truth.
these case studies highlight how effortlessly our brains can rationalize our behavior. We carefully make narratives to shield our beliefs, justify our memories, and hide our intentions and motives so we can reflect on the most important decisions we made in our lives. But our true motives will remain an enigma even to ourselves.